College is supposed to be a place for learning and an exchange of ideas. However, not if the liberal students don't agree with you. <laughs> they will shut you down, cancel you. You may be literally chased off campus, like the student who invited Lieutenant Colonel Allen West, or barricaded in a room for three hours <coughs> like Riley Gaines after she was chased following a speech at San Francisco State University about biological men not being in real women's sports. But a graduation speech accusing Israel of killing and torturing Palestinians, not quite getting the same reaction. If I was told seven years ago, as a Palestinian refugee stepping foot for the first time in this country, that one day I'll be standing on this stage, I would not have believed it. I gift my graduation to all Palestinians who have lost their lives and those who continue to lose their lives every day due to the oppressive apartheid state of Israel, killing and torturing Palestinians as we speak. We have reached out to El Camino Community College for comment. We're waiting to hear back. Look, Kaylee, um, her words and then some clapping from that audience. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know who was clapping because she shouldn't have been applauded in any way, shape or form. Uh, but they get taxpayer dollars at El Camino College, 150 million in federal, state and local tax dollars, just like Cooney. So your taxpayer dollars are going to fund hate fueled speeches like the one we saw at Cooney that two weeks later they came out and said, oh, wait, it was hate speech. And is this being sanctioned by administrators? I want to know the answer to that because apparently um, the New York Post said that a college director approved that speech. That's what that young woman claims. And there's some reporting that the Cooney speech, Daily Mail said CARE, according to CARE, and I don't take CARE's word for much of anything, uh, they said Fatima's speech at Cooney was submitted, examined, and pre-approved. So I want to know the degree to which college administrators approve this or not. Mm. Well, and whether or not there really was a look at the Constitution, um, you know, we're, the free speech is, is that that does not ignite, right? It's the protected speech cannot. And so I want somebody to take a look at that and, and see what it is, Tammy. Um, is it within the bounds? But I'll tell you, I always say I love hearing people just say what they think because that's how you find out who they are. Exactly. I mean, this is valuable. However, it also, to some degree, normalizes this kind of rhetoric. And we all look back and we think, how could the, you know, everybody in the 30s allow everything to happen? Well, now you're watching it happen here. Mm -hmm. And it be, it's a combination of fear and of controls and of losing your scholarship, of being a professor, losing your tenureship, getting kicked out. Uh, there are threats and controls that make people not say anything. The thing that moves us out of this is courage mm -hmm. on a personal level to say no and to recognize that this is not normal yeah. because what you're seeing is an enforced acceptance. You had maybe a dozen people applauding, but the problems are not just at an Al Camino, Princeton, a new survey of Princeton University students. Three quarters of the students surveyed said that it's acceptable to shout down or disrupt speakers who uh, hold viewpoints with which they disagree. Uh, and 18% said that it's okay to use violence against unobjectionable speech. And that's so, what we're seeing. Right, so this is what we're seeing at, at college and also now high schools. And this is what parents, kids have to stop trusting the system, have got to get involved and, and know what their children are facing. Douglas. You know, uh, universities were first set up in the West for a single pursuit, and that was the pursuit of truth. That is so far away from what American <laughs> universities are trying to pursue today. But let me just do a little quick exercise in truth. This girl, this speaker, is a fake, she's a phony, she's a fraud. She said she's a Palestinian refugee. She isn't. It turns out her grandparents may have been Palestinian refugees, but only Palestinians, but all the peoples in the world, claim to have multi-generational refugee status. Other people leave a country for whatever reason, and their descendants are members of that country. Only Palestinians still say, 70 years after the creation of the State of Israel, that they are refugees. This girl is not a refugee. She has never been a refugee. She is claiming victim status because she knows in current America that's what gets you applause. And then you can be rude about the Jews, and then you can lie about Israel, and you can pretend... Mm. You know, the, pe the, only, the people who are persecuting the Palestinians are Palestinians. She should talk about that. So real quickly, because I know people will watch this and they'll say, well, how do you find that out? Because we're, we're continuing to see this now. You just have to, people have to do their work. And they, have to, and they have to call out bigots like this. You know, she knows that if she wears a hijab and she talks about the oppression of the Palestinians by the wicked Zionists, she will be praised. Well, I suggest that people, as Tammy says, 
do the opposite and say, you know, you can't defame a nation and its people and lie about them and normalize that and get away with it. Well, and part uh, of it, too, is what struck me the most here is the fundamental lack of gratitude. So we have yeah, this woman who's, who's claiming to be a refugee, as you say, and then the previous one at CUNY, um, which was a law school, by the way, which matters, and, and I'll get to that a little later, but she was of um, Yemeni origin, I believe. Mm -hmm. And this country has welcomed so many people like that with open arms, and to turn around and say, you are nothing, this is a gross nation, mm. to me, it's, it's a fundamental lack of gratitude. But where the law thing comes in, and this is important, we saw in March U.S. Uh, Circuit Judge Kyle Duncan, Stanford Law, get shouted down by those yes. law students. And, you know, personal invectives were thrown. His family was threatened. What happens when this next generation of law students uh, gets their clerkships, mm. which they shouldn't? Mm -hmm. uh, what happens when they, they sit the bench? That is what I have my eye on the next five to ten years. We've got to nip it in the bud right now. What a fascinating conversation. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.